Hello and welcome to the Everything Is Black and White podcast on Chronicle Live on Facebook, Twitter, and on YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube, please like and subscribe to the channel. And if you're listening later on the podcast channel, scroll down to where all our episodes can be found and leave us a nice review and star rating if you have the time to do so. I'm joined by football editor Mark Douglas. We want your questions, so if you're watching live, please do pop your questions in the comments on whatever platform you're you're watching from. We'll kickstart, Mark, with that dreaded word that is the takeover. We usually try and leave that to the end so we don't depress anybody. But a little bit of information this morning coming out, and it was from Lord Jerry Grimstone, uh, who was a, a government minister. He met the Saudi Minister of Communication. Uh, he was on Sky this morning talking about that meeting, and, and the Newcastle United takeover came up. He was asked about it. What did he have to say? Yeah, not not an awful lot to be perfectly honest. Um, he was he was asked whether there was anything to be excited about from a Newcastle takeover perspective. He said, you know, that's a commercial matter, not a ministerial matter. So um, he's a minister for trade. So he met Saudi um, the Saudi minister for um, I believe communications last week, and he said, you know, it's nothing to do specifically with the uh, with the takeover. But I think what's interesting is that people putting kind of two and two together, and obviously he was somebody that was. Um, employed by the consortium last um, last year to try and sort of grease the wheels a little bit of shuttle diplomacy I think was the uh, was was the was the uh, correct term I think in the last last summer so he has been involved I think what's interesting is that you know obviously he's not going to say yes we talked solely about the Newcastle United takeover because it was like he said a ministerial matter and the government are on the record saying they won't get involved in it but it's just another little thing I think that um, you know, it's still bubbling away in the background. I think is 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 what I would say about it. Um, I would I wasn't expecting him. I wouldn't expect him to say anything um, about it. But it's obviously quite interesting that you know there was no sort of shooting it down and no sort of saying, oh well, it's irrelevant. It's got nothing to do with uh, the takeover. It's got nothing to do with me at all. Um, you know, there was kind of like an implicit acknowledgement that yes, he's been involved. We know that people involved in the PCP consortium um, have. Some links with the Conservative Party, Jamie Rubin and Amanda Staveley are both um, people who who have those links. You know, you just need to look at Jamie Rubin's Twitter feed to know where his political affiliations lie and where um, and where he's been able to sort of apply some pressure. They obviously did that last summer. They, they there was a lot of uh, the letter writing campaign that the NUST uh, went on, and, and in addition to that, there was also pressure being applied behind the scenes to certain government ministers and um, and to the Premier League by those political heavyweights um, but obviously it didn't it didn't end up changing um, changing where we stand so I think the next the next step for this is 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 you know where, where it was before but it's always interesting I think when these little things crop up or when people talk about it and you know it's obviously they it was raised in parliament last week we've got a government minister talking about it this week it's all sort of just signs that it's it's all sort of there and you know we're we're anticipating that Things will come to a head in the next next few weeks. We've been saying that for months and months and months. But I think we are probably getting to the point where, um, you know, it, it probably there will be, you know, some big story coming out um, relatively in the in the sort of short to medium term. I think about this and maybe t- telling us where things are going. Um, the, the next step for the takeover. But yeah, it's all just little things. I think it's it's always. I always find it quite interesting when people like him, you know, there's there's an army of people behind the scenes we've probably never heard of. He's just somebody that we obviously um, we obviously revealed was involved in it last year. Um, so he was so he was quoted on it for the first time today. Lots of questions about the takeover. Um, a few questions from the likes of Kath who ask about this arbitration, about the two court cases, and just your view on the impact they could have and, and potentially where they're at at the moment. Well, I mean, you know, unfortunately, because it's, I think, as, as Richard Masters said at the um, in December, because it is behind closed doors, because they don't want anybody to um, to kind of know about where they stand. It's it's not, um, it isn't at this at this moment um, in the public domain, and I don't think it will be, and I think that's probably not a bad thing. Um, uh, the last I heard was that it hadn't officially started yet, so um, we, you know, we weren't in a position where. Um, it was. It was. We were going to hear a verdict anytime soon, um, but I, but that that could change. You know, I I, I feel bad really because I come on here and, and, and take questions about takeover and specifically like that. You know, I, I think there's a lot of people that that that, um, that don't know, even people within the consortium that don't know. But as far as I'm aware, I, I'm 
you know, I'm just going on on the little tidbits that you pick up from people around the console. They sort of think that the spring is going to be is going to be key, and there will be you know there will be some maybe some updates around then as well. I mean, it's not it's not guaranteed that the arbitration is going to go for Newcastle, but obviously if it does, um, and if it does, and that that is on the key factor about whether or not um, there is a separation between PIF and um, the Saudi state, which is obviously the biggest the biggest um, issue that's that cropped up. Um, if that goes with Newcastle and Mike Ashley's lawyers, then you know obviously that does then allow a um, that does then allow a, a breakthrough, in my opinion, in in the takeover process. And I think it probably then tells you that it, it will go ahead. Um, but you know we, we're still a, we're still a way away from that at the moment. And I think what we all kind of need is some clarity. We need somebody to be able to tell us definitively whether this is going to happen or not. Because you know this has been hanging over us now for over a year. Um, and it's really been the dominant theme. I mean, I wrote a piece on Monday saying that, you know, the, the Steve Bruce out sort of business is kind of irrelevant, really, while this bigger picture is going on at Newcastle. Obviously, if the takeover happens, I think that will take care of itself. I think there probably will be a new manager within a few months of, of, of a takeover happening. If it doesn't, then, you know, then it does become much more of a live issue. Is Steve Bruce the right man to take him forward? But I think at the moment, we know he's not going to be sacked. We know. Um, the club aren't going to make massive investment in the team and in the in the in the infrastructure while there's a pandemic going on and while there's not a lot of money available. So we really need a resolution on this. Um, we know there's obviously this this arbitration case, and there may be something off the back of that if that doesn't go for Mike Ashley. There's always there's always the option of taking it to a um, taking it to court as well. Obviously, at the moment it's just in that arbitration um, it's in that arbitration um, situation. Which is uh, which is where you've got your Nick, Nick DeMarcos and other people that are, that are kind of doing their business. But obviously, he did have another he did have another win yesterday, didn't he, with the uh, salary cap? So you know, we're dealing with a guy who knows his way around um, sports procedures. So if anybody's going to get it, I think it would be him. Mm, I was going to mention Nick DeMarco. Maybe that's now the kind of starting point for this Newcastle case to you know really take hold of his his uh, his diary, so to speak. Um, we got Travis Stevens here asking. Why do their teams and their takeover kind of go through straight away uh, and ours is dragging on? And I suppose that look, you look at the Burnley one and that's been in the news recently about how the finances have been structured there. You've got Southampton uh, taking the interest of Joseph de Grossa, who, of course, was interested in Newcastle and reportedly still interested should that Southampton deal not uh, go through. But you would imagine that one would go through a lot quicker as well. Can you just give... Our listeners and have you as a bit of insight into that? Well, interestingly, you mentioned about all the other ones that that, that uh, happened quickly and, and Newcastle's dragging on. Derby is one that um, has been going on for three months. There's no resolution in sight there. No surprise, they were they were people who were involved with Newcastle as well. You know, it's been unfortunate that the people who've been attracted to Newcastle, you know, mentioned De Grosser there. We mentioned Peter Kenyon who also. Uh, tried to take Newcastle over, and then you had the, the Binside group as well. They're all they're three groups that didn't have the money to do it. Um, you know, they couldn't raise the money to do it, so that's why those dragged on. And this one is just simply because of all the different uh, aspects around the takeover. So we all know the political aspects of it, which obviously added a layer of intrigue to it. But but the bigger one, I think, the bigger two were the piracy and the separation. Um, and they didn't get a resolution on the separation, and they didn't get a resolution on the piracy um, in the summer. Now we. we feel there may be dragging there may be you know a, cl- a sort of you know a, a movement towards maybe some resolution on things like piracy now that there are uh, movements in the in the gulf although it's interesting that you know being sport still blocked in saudi arabia officially there's still movement there with there's bigger issues there um around potential um remuneration that's owed to being sport by whoever it was in saudi that was um that was pirating their um Whoever it was, it sounded it was pirating the, uh, the, the 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 rights, um, you know. So so I think that's the reason why those are taking that. That's the reason why this one's taking time because the political sensitivities around it. I think we've been unlucky really that a lot of the people involved with Newcastle haven't had the money, or um, they've run up against Mike Ashley, who I think has been a very difficult seller. And there's no doubt in my mind that he has been a difficult seller. He's been awkward to deal with at various points. I know that people who've tried to buy it off him have sort of said, "Oh no, you know, he hasn't been put." Um, they would say that when they're trying to deal with him. Um, 
if you speak to people within the P PCP consortium, they'd say that he was difficult to deal with, but he, he wasn't as soon as he was convinced that the Saudi money was there. He obviously wanted to do the deal. But bear in mind, he did then try to big the price up as well um, after the exclusivity ran out last season. So he's not totally blameless himself. But yeah, I mean, that that for me is the simple reason. This was, this was very politically expensive. But as soon as Saudi Arabia got involved with football, given the background in piracy and the fact that it's impossible to watch Premier League legally. It was always going to be a difficult one. Um, and it was, um, you know, I think that that was maybe at the time we, we all felt that, you know, it's going to go through because of the confidence around it from the consortium. I think it became apparent after a few weeks of the summer that it wasn't going to be quite as straightforward as they, they felt it was. Um, but yeah, I mean, that is simply simply why it is. You mentioned Burnley. I mean, that that could come back to bite the Premier League in in, um, in in future future years because that one does look like it's been structured in a way that could potentially be troublesome. Um, but but yeah, I mean, I think the bigger point on on it is this is the biggest takeover that the, that the Premier League seen for many many years. You know, you talk about other clubs that have been taken over Burnley. Well, with respect, that's about a third of the cost of Newcastle United. I don't think there's been a football club taken over for this kind of money for such a long time so that might be another reason why it's not why it's not happening and then we've also you throw in the pandemic as well that's complicated factors as well so yeah I mean it was no surprise that it's taken a while but you know I don't think anybody expected it to take over a year um, to find a resolution I don't think we thought in July that we'd still be talking about it as a live possibility now um, but here we are and it is still obviously something that is, is a big deal um, I think it needs to be res resolved because if it's not going to be PIF. Then we need to know from Mike Ashley what he's going to do. Is he going to be prepared to take less money? Because I don't think anybody other than this group are going to pay the money that he wants, the 350 million that he wants right now. Because we've got a we've got a pandemic that's crunching revenues, and it's probably going to crunch revenues for one or two years. Because I can't see full stadiums um, before the end of this year. I mean, I'm not basing that on anything in particular, but. It feels unlikely, given the trend and the way things are going, that we're going to see a 52,000 um, crowd at Newcastle United um, in the very, very short term. So, yeah, that that affects revenues. So, um, yeah, we really we really need a resolution. We, we need to know. I think fans are getting fed up. We're getting fed up. Everybody's getting fed up of sort of having this hanging over us. Well, that's interesting. I'll, we'll answer this question first from Brad, but there is a question linking to what you've just said there, Mark, about people being fed up. And I suppose Brad, he's probably not alone. You know, you're going to get skeptics about this takeover. Um, and he asks, is this takeover actually a thing? I really don't believe it. it. Just seems to be the same old thing every year. And then people always point to stories creeping up around the transfer window, and it happened again mm -hmm. before the w the window we've just had. Um, I mean, that skepticism is perfectly understandable. But this takeover is very much real. They had massive plans. They were ambitious. You know, they really wanted to take Newcastle United over. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, I, I didn't see many people sort of saying it, it wasn't a thing in the summer or, or in the spring. Um, you know, we I spoke to to three people within the deal, um, including one very high ranking person at, at the PIF who who ran me through the exact business plan and what they were going to do. And it was it was impressive stuff. I mean, you know, it's no secret because it, it all eventually came out in the summer anyway as part of the, you know, I think part of the kind of like the, the sell to Newcastle fans when it, when it collapsed. Um, is it still a thing now? All I can say is, you know, the same voices that were talking about it in the um, in the summer are still talking about it as a live possibility. Um, I think PIF are being less effusive than they were last summer because they're, they're not, um, you know, they're not, they're not talking specifically about, about it at the moment. You know, you're not probably going to see a public statement from them either. Um, but, you know, I, I, all I can say is that, you know, if it was something when they weren't talking about it and we, you know, if people are just thinking we're just kind of flogging a dead horse here, um, that's not the case, you know, because the, the people around it are still hopeful. And as you can see, you know, if it, if it was a if it was dead horse, there wouldn't be arbitration going on with the Premier League. It's all I can say. You know, I know I, I see I see the things that people say about it. You know, it, it, the problem is what's happened in the. In the last six months, nine months, there's a, there's a whole industry that's built up around the takeover. A lot of people are, you know, are um, it's in their interests at the moment for 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 this for the thing to keep bubbling along. We know there's a massive amount of appetite for it. We know that, that you know 
of the amount of interest in it you know with even the story like this morning is a kind of nothing story really in many ways is being really well read on our site and you know we, we feel we've got a bit of a responsibility on that side we don't want to publish anything that's just nonsense but it is still a big talking point it's still what people want to know about so our reporters myself you other people are trying to find out information and we're trying to get information about the takeover because we know it's the thing that people want to talk about so that's why i think it's still very um, very firmly in people's minds it's also it defines everything you know if if it happens then everything else flows from it if it doesn't happen then we've got big questions about the future of the football club under mike ashley and what happens next so is it real all i can say is you know it is if it wasn't I'd be, I'd be perfectly honest and say, you know, bluntly, it wasn't. I, I'm not promising that we wouldn't write about takeover and ownership future in the future because that's that's still for me the biggest. When you've got an owner who doesn't want to, to be owner of the football club and a fan base definitely wanting gone, take the takeover and an ownership issues are the biggest issue around the football club. So that's why it's being written about. And um, you know, I know people get annoyed about things like so. For example, this morning story it doesn't necessarily move it forward um, massively. But it deserves to be chronicled, I think, because it's something that's being asked. And it's like the question in Parliament last week. It's, yeah, and it doesn't move it forward specifically to the story going, but it's something that's being talked about. So I think you know we we do, um, you know we do we do have an obligation in some ways to write about those things, and you know, and I think people are interested. And as soon as it doesn't happen, as soon as the people around it are not are saying it's not going to happen anymore, and um, Saudis walk away definitively, then you know, yeah, we'll write that, and I think then we move away from it, and we 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 draw a line under this, and we we don't we don't write about it anymore, we don't talk about it anymore. Um, but let's hope that's not the case. Let's hope we talk about it actually happening, and all the positive things around it. But it's still the livest for me. It's still the livest issue around the football club at the moment. You know, for, between the, the games, anyway. You know, today, for example, there's no Steve Bruce was two days away. The match was two days two days before. So what are the issues that people want to want to read about in between? You know, um, and the the answer, you know, when this thing's mentioned about the takeover is probably the takeover. Hmm. I mean, interestingly on stories, I'm still waiting on the response from the DTMS on the freedom of information request about their correspondence with the Premier League. That's now, well, that is now over three months late. Um, it's not been rejected and it's going through clearance, but it's been spending the last six weeks going through clearance. So we will continue the fight on that, but the longer it goes on, the more intrigued I am with what we will eventually get sent. There's an interesting question here from Matthew Slater on our YouTube channel. And he says, surely the chances of proving PIF is separate from the Saudi state are very low. And it, this is probably one of the key points, if not the key points um, for the Premier League, is proving that these two, from the Premier League's point of view, are there's no separate entity, the PIF, trying to prove that there is. If you go on the PIF's website, he's top of the pyramid chain there on their website. So you can understand maybe why there are questions over, you know, the PIF trying to prove that they are separate from the Saudi state. Yeah. And obviously, um, he, he, I mean, he was appeared last week. It was a two, two weeks ago, um, setting out the goals for the PIF. Um, I mean, that is a complicated issue, isn't it? It's a massively complicated issue. And, and that was, Obviously, what ended up settling on, um, you know, what they ended up settling on uh, in the summer is the biggest issue. Um, the, my feeling at the time was always that, you know, the Premier League then offered arbitration on that issue. Um, and there you go. You know, why didn't they take it? They, they said it was a, it was a fast. It shouldn't, shouldn't have had to do that. Um, you know, they, 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 they dealt with them differently from how they dealt with everybody else. And obviously then you've got everybody kind of coming in and saying, well, it would be in sport and Qatar who put, put the pressure on. But yeah, I mean, that, that that's the big issue. Now, against that, you have the fact that um, the, I think Yasser Ramayan um, obtained, a, I think it was from a, a official assurance from the highest state in the, the highest body in the land in Saudi Arabia that there would be absolutely no interference whatsoever um between uh, the, the state and how newcastle united was run so their sort of saying their point was well, where else do you want us to go we've literally got the assurance here um there would be potentially uh, penalties if that was breached so you know what, what more do you want so 
I think that was always the issue. And I, I always felt like, well, if you can't agree on it, then it needs to go to independent arbitration. The, take, the people involved in the consortium didn't want that because obviously it would have been, I think, probably quite embarrassing for um, for, for those kind of things to get brought up in 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 um, in, in public uh, in public. And you know, I think you, you can't you can't underestimate how little we understand about how some foreign societies run. You know, we, we don't like. I, I was always I was amazed when um, the Bin Zayed thing happened. How difficult it was to ascertain how much wealth the person involved with Bin Zayed had. There was no way, absolutely no way of ascertaining who he was, how much money he had, the size of the fund that Bin Zayed were. It was impossible, absolutely impossible. It's just not the way that that society runs. It doesn't have the same the same ways of, of, of running things. I know that for a fact that over there, there were reporters and journalists who, um, from um, Western backgrounds, who were ringing me with sort of in, in, you know, issues about the people there and saying, "Look, it's worth looking at this, worth looking at that," but they couldn't run that those stories in um, store in, in newspapers based there, and it'll be the same in Saudi, you know. So, I I am not qualified to uh, to answer that question. All I'll say is that you know, when we put it to the PIF, they said what more do you want we, we are being dealt with differently here um you know and i'm sure that if you went through you know if you went through the way that the other takeovers have happened especially manchester city i think you know were the same you know were the same things applied there and i know you know there was always the argument that, that man city had a different had a different body set up specifically to take over manchester manchester city um but again you know where's the separation between state and um football club there I would argue that there, that there isn't there isn't necessarily one there either, but you know that it's you know I, I'm just sitting here um, trying to find out whether Callum Wilson's going to play on Saturday, um, and you know I'm being kind of drawn in on golf politics as I have been for for months and months and months. But that would be that would be my my concern as well is when you've got Mohammed bin Salman kind of doing what he did uh, about three weeks ago with the PIF is that. Is that a ready-made argument for look? Where's the separation here? Just you know, and of course it doesn't stop Newcastle from being taken over by PAF. They just want Mohammed bin Salman as one of the directors, which obviously was something that they didn't, they didn't, um, they didn't, they didn't want, or not necessarily him as director, but it would be the Saudi state would have to be nominated as a director, which then obviously then opens them up to um, certain things as well. And I think obviously that you know they felt as a sovereign country they they wouldn't they wouldn't want to. Go to so it's incredibly complicated, and I think it just needs to go to an independent arbitration for a decision, um, which I think is obviously it's not the PIF that have taken it there, but I think that's where it's going to end up. It's going to end up with somebody independent making a call, making a judgment call, and um, you know you've got somebody like Nick DeMarco who knows his way around sport regulation. Well, you'd say that if he can't get it to where the Newcastle, the people involved who want the sale, can want it, then it's not going to get there, and it, they, everybody needs to move on um and and not happen but i think if it if they don't take over newcastle i think the pif will end up taking over a football club in another country where maybe the rules are different um which will be um you know another absolute you know i don't think that'll go down particularly well with newcastle fans. it'd be a big blow wouldn't it and i've seen many people uh say about nick demarco that you know he wouldn't necessarily choose a case where the odds are against him so with that question about being a separate entity he must feel there is a strong case to, to prove that and to, well, to get the decision Mike Ashley wants uh, against the Premier League. Penultimate question on the takeover, Mark, before we do talk about the injuries that are currently ripping through Newcastle. Ben Simpson there asks, are you fed up with reporting about the takeover and uh, having to fill the newspaper with it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, I, you know, I saw um, one of my old friends writing, you know, writing columns about the Chronicle and the takeover and stuff, which were, you know, I think, really unfair and, and, and pretty pretty uh scandalous really in some ways that you know the, the the lack of kind of understanding of how of how the, the chronicles kind of you know how the chronicle works to be perfectly honest fed up um fed up of writing the same thing you know i think that that you know fed up of writing that we're waiting for something to happen and fed up of kind of you know of of, of that but not but not fed up of the idea that there are some really 
wealthy people and some people with some really you know different ideas for the football club sitting there wanting to buy the football club i'd be more worried if there was nothing going on and we were writing about it um but uh yeah i'm fed up i suppose to an extent what, what i really want what everybody really wants is the um is the takeover to to happen and then to be able to talk about you know the next step in in the football club i think what we're fed up what i'm really fed up with is you know this hierarchy um being in charge because you know where whatever like obviously there, there's some good things can happen while they're still here that's i'm not saying that but they're in my opinion they're fed up of owning newcastle united the newcastle fans are fed up of them being in charge i don't think they've got any good ideas to take the football club forward anymore we've seen that they're not talking anymore there's no communication between them and the fans there's no communication between them and the media you saw their reflex reaction when things went wrong was just to blame questions that are being asked things like that you know they're yeah, right that's fine if they want to if they want to kind of you know put like, flex out against um you know show their muscles against the the, the written media or asking tough questions of them then that's fine but that to me just shows there's no you know that that is their reflex reaction then they're not they're not interested in selling a vision for the future of the football club they lost 10,000 so they had to give away 10,000 free season tickets last season it would have been more this season if there wasn't a pandemic in some ways for them it's been good to go behind closed doors because they don't they're not you know who are they accountable to now well you know, they, I think they've shown that, that they're not accountable to fans because they don't, they're not they're not really communicating publicly with the NUST. They're not communicating publicly with anybody. Lee Charney hasn't given an interview for over a year. Mike Ashley doesn't do interviews. And Steve Bruce feels like the siege mentality around the football club now is, well, everybody, you know, nobody wants to, like none of the media will give me a fair crack of the whip, all this business. That's what I'm fed up of rather than the takeover. The takeover for me, in some ways, offers a chink of light at the end of the tunnel because if this is the future for Newcastle United it's what we're going to get is we're going to get really nice days like Saturday we're going to we've got some really good players some really you know great players we've got some you know some, some interesting things to write about don't get me wrong but those are going to be limited gains because you know long term it's going to go back to the sort of negativity because fans just don't buy that the people involved in the football club have the long-term interests at heart so that's what I get fed up of rather than writing or talking about the takeover. Final question then on the takeover from Ryan John. Do you think the takeover would happen in the summer? And if it did, would Steve Bruce leave? I think Bruce would leave, yeah, if the takeover happened. Um, you know, I think he'd probably get a few, he'd probably get a few um, a few weeks or, or months even while they were kind of looking at what they were going to do next. But I think when they spoke in the summer about not needing to make a change, I think probably now kind of going on, um, it's kind of the way it's gone. It, it's gone quite negative, hasn't it, around Steve Bruce? So I would say, yeah, I think he would go. Is it going to happen in the summer? Um, I don't know. You know, I, I've I've always felt like I felt like there's got to be there's going to be a resolution at some point. It's, they've not given up on it, and that to me means that you know that, that, that there's a possibility that it will happen. Yeah, and all I, you can reflect is that there's still there's still that element of confidence amongst the people involved, but. That confidence has been there for um, since they they got they, they they sort of started negotiating with Mike Ashley. Um, it was there throughout the summer when it didn't happen. Um, so that's all you can reflect on. But no, none of them have walked away. So that's got to be a you know positive as well. Um, you can tell they're still desperate for it to happen because of their social media activity and things around that. Um, so let's just wait and see. Um, if it doesn't happen by the summer, I think it's probably time to move on. Um, but then, you know, the summer's not that long away, is it? It's only four months until, you know, and say that while there's snow outside and, and all these things, but it's, it's only kind of four months until you're talking about, what well, five, three months, really, three and a half months, you're talking about the summer starting. So, um, yeah, let's hope for something. I think it'll be, I think it'll be sort of towards the end of this month, probably before we find out anything. Um, and it might just come out of the blue, you know, I, I've not really been able to get that much of a, steer on what's happens with arbitration and and i think that that's deliberate i think that'll be behind closed doors but i think thanks to the social media activity of nick demarco and people like that we're kind of being kept updated on, on at least that it's going on and it's bubbling away um 
you know, I'd like to get a big interview with him at the end of it, find out, you know, what was actually going on with, with his use of Twitter in particular, because he's definitely keeping us interested, um, which is which is which is kind of nice to see in a way. And it tells you something, doesn't it? That they're, you know, the odd tweet is more about what's going on than um, than anybody in Newcastle United has been able to tell us or or deigned to tell us rather because they could tell us what's going on. But they've been... He was cooking bread this morning. I did count the number of currents in it just to see if it related <laughs> to anything Newcastle wise, but I couldn't work it out. If anyone has any theories, do drop it in the comments. We'll move on to football matters. And Jay Kirkwood here has apologised for a non-takeover question, but hey, we welcome them sort of questions on this show. And he says, hey guys, hope you're both well. Yeah, we're not too bad, thanks. Any idea how long Wilson is out for? It's a simple question, is it? Because it is really the one that matters, I guess, Mark. Ooh, good question. Um, no, I don't know off the top of my head at the moment. Um I think he'll miss Saturday. I'm pretty sure of that, given the nature of the injury. Um, I would think it would be a shorter term injury. I, it didn't look like the, it didn't look like a very very serious one. And the way that he's been talked about as opposed to Shah, um, I don't think I don't think it's going to be a, a long term injury. But I think he'll be missing on uh, Monday. Sorry, they're playing Chelsea, aren't they? So I think he, I think he'll be missing on Monday, uh, but he might be back the week after. But, but we still wait. I know I know that they um, they were waiting on the scans at the start of the week. Um, which to me suggests that it's not dreadful. It's not really bad news, but but I don't think he's been in training since Saturday. So um, it would say to me it's unlikely that Saturday's going to uh, uh, no, sorry that Monday's going to happen. You tipped Gale to start, or you said you'd you'd like to see Gale start in the podcast we did after that Southampton game. Is that still your pick against Chelsea? Yeah, I think so. Um, I, th- I think so. Um, for me, Gale, I just like to see him get a chance. You know, I'd like to see him. Him, uh, him with with some of the other uh, some of the other kind of excitement. I mean, I like his movement. I like I like I like Gale. I, like, I think you know I think he's been underrated. He scored a few goals since, since he came back to uh, Newcastle and West Brom as well. I know he missed that goal, goal against uh, Man City, but he scored some decent goals um, after we came back from the sort of COVID um, uh, situation last se- last season. So I'd like to see him get get a chance. It might be like I said on on Saturday that, that the contract situation rules him out. Um, in the short term, which would be a real shame, but I'd like to see him. Uh, it could be Carroll, you know. It could be Carroll because they might look. They might look at the the players they've got now, the, the crosses and the things like that that are being played. Um, that are being played, and you know, the more attacking um, situation that they're they're in at the moment, and and look for and look at Carroll. But um, but I think it'll probably be, um, you know, it, it, it'll it, it'll probably be him out for at least at least one game. I think. Probably. Fabian Cher is going to be out for a couple of months at the very least. His contract is up in the summer like Gales. Do Newcastle sign him up for another year, a couple of years, regardless if he makes it back onto the pitch this season? Yeah, I think they I think they will. Um, I think they'll give him an, an extra year, probably just to protect his value, especially given if he comes back towards the end of the season, he'll probably be in the Euros as well. You don't want to let him go out for a, uh, on a... Um, on a on a uh, free when you know he's obviously a good player as well. It wouldn't surprise me if they did what they did with um, Freddy Fernandez, um, which is kind of sign him up for an extra year, just see just see where things go. You know, you've got to ask the question: They're going to be able to get um, a better player in for the kind of money that they're probably going to have in the summer. Um, I think they could do with bringing in another centre back. I think they've you know I know that the scouts have been looking at that across. Across Europe and um, and especially even in the Championship, they've been looking at players who could um, who could potentially come in and 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 add and, and add something, you know, younger players. Um, but they cost money at the moment, and Newcastle won't have a lot of that in the summer. They'll obviously have the money that they get from the TV revenue, uh, but they're not going to have the extra revenue that you get from from um, from the crowds and things like that as well. So. I would think that they probably will look at share, um, and it may be one of the others that you know. Even if they sign him up and then sell him on, um, I, I would be surprised if they don't um, if they don't trigger the one year option that they've got with share. Troy's uh, given his team there: Darlow, Manquillo, Hayden, Clark, Lewis. He's gone for Anderson, Shelby, Willock, Almiron, Gale, and Alison Maxman. Minus Anderson, I probably think that is maybe the team that, that, that could start. Trevor is watching from the Falcon Islands, so um, we're broadcasting literally globally, so that's a, a nice nice to know. That team out there that you see, is that the one 
maybe like I say, minus Anderson, you could see starting. Yeah, I, I you know what, like I like that. I like that team. Um, I really like that team. Um, I like I like the idea of Willock playing um, as an attacking as an attacking midfielder in the way that Vine Aldum did um, before. Um, you know, before when he was in, in 2015, that was that was really good. I don't think Elliot Anderson will, will, will start, um, but I think um, I think obviously Hendrick coming out, it'll be interesting. I'd like to see Matty Longstaff come into the club for the next chance. You can't change the team really from from um, you can't change the, the people who ended up the nine who ended up on the on the pitch anyway. Um, obviously, there'll have to be a change with Wilson, um, but I think the main the main part of it, you've got to see. I'd like to see Almiron in the same role, Alan Maxim in the same role. Um, yeah, I'd like to. I, I would. I would be really keen, really keen to see that uh, that that sort of team, that kind of attacking lineup, uh, continue. The most important thing is um, just just pressing. You know, the same intensity that they had. Um, they've had over the last four games, and, and it'll be enjoyable to see. And I think everybody will give Steve Bruce a chance. Everybody will give this team a chance as long as they play like that. That's all we were asking for when we were criticising them heavily for the passive performances they were putting in. And we'll finish with this question. Then the final question. We'll finish on an interesting one from Mike Elliott. Uh, just asked about the transfer funds in the summer. I suppose this is linked to the takeover as well. If it doesn't go through, Mark, do you think there will be money to spend, or do you think it'll just be loans? Yeah, there'll be money to spend because they'll have um, all the money from the t- all the money from the TV, um, which is obviously kind of around I think thirty, forty million um, plus whatever prize money they have as well. So there'll be money to there'll be money to spend in the summer. Um, but it will be less than would have been in previous years. So you may be looking at one or two players coming in. Yeah, there might be sales as well. There'll be a lot of players out of contract by then as well. So there'll be more money to free up on the budget. So there'll be there'll be there'll be room to play, I think, in the in the summer. But it but you know, it might be two or three players coming in rather than the rest. And then maybe loans. I, I could see Joe Willett coming back for a season long loan next season if it all works out, because you know, Arsenal obviously will you know they'll have a decision to make on him but i could see that kind of thing happening and maybe them bringing in a season-long loan but maybe one or two players coming in a striker center back um box to box midfielder if will it goes um that that'll be what you're talking about but they've got three players the czar's obviously gone now Henri Savé who's on 35 that or 30 around 35 grand a week and um potentially um you know other others who could leave as well matt ritchie you know nearly left in january well it could be the year that he goes as well, especially if Bournemouth get promoted. Um, so there will be there will be room to play, I think, for Newcastle next season um, for in the summer. But you know, obviously, like I said, if the takeover happens, they pledge fifty million per transfer for per season, additional top up funds um, on on top of what they had. So you'd be looking at more like eighty million, and then you could be talking about four or five players, and it might even be more than that that they look at. You know, they might really fancy having a go at it um, if, they, if they take over. But um, you know, I think that's still a bit of a pipe dream at the moment well there we have it guys thank you very much for tuning in if you are on youtube like i say please remember to like and subscribe to the channel we'll be back later in the week we'll have to uh to preview the chelsea game so watch out for that marks mark thank you for joining us uh, head over to chronicle live.co.uk to keep up with all the latest newcastle United news